right, guess what, Print Fam? Today's a good day. This Sidewinder has basically been sitting idle since I, there's so many little things I just couldn't figure out. The M&R tech is in town and he had a few minutes so he just wanted to swing by and kind of show me some of the things that I could do to tune it up. Yeah, I'm Dan Goldberg. Dan Goldberg. Len Kovacs. All right, so we're gonna dive in. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something while I'm learning something. Being as how it's a used press, we, we just don't know how it was treated in the past, but it's obviously got some miles on it, and that's fine. Uh, press is it's still in pretty good shape. But look, when a manual press gets used day in, day out, you're loosening knobs often. Uh, yeah. The micro uh, assembly up here, uh, you, Cam, you said you actually removed the domes and, and the kip knobs. Um, because you guys were having a hard time, things were moving around on you. Mm -hmm. And when uh, the kip knobs are loosened, micros are adjusted, sometimes uh, these studs can even come loose. And so that might have been the cause. So by us removing this nylock nut, pulling it off and dropping that stud out of the lower micro plate. So I've got the spot cleaning solution in here. And I'm just gonna lay this stud down on top of a t-shirt. And clean away all the residual uh, grease and Loctite. I'm gonna set that aside to dry and I'm gonna bring this gun over to the head itself. Okay. And I'm gonna spray down into the hole where the threads are. Okay. because I got a lot of grease buildup in there. If the grease mixes with the Loctite, it won't cure. And you're gonna see all that lube scattering and off the threads down there on that lower plate. Okay. So I'm gonna go on a different angle here. And that should do it. Jesse, you need to move this shit out of the way? I know you stuff in here. We're just fucking your day all up, aren't we? <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna take the stud that we pulled out, we've cleaned it up with our spot cleaning gun, and we're going to compare it to another print head. So by holding this in the exact same place that the one we pulled out is in, then I can see where I need to apply my Loctite. And in this case, I'm just gonna, I don't have a measuring tape with me, so I'll just, I'm just gonna use two fingers. So right there, at the top of my two fingers is where the lower, uh, microplate starts. So I know that I'm going to drop that Loctite right there past my fingers. So we're going to drop Loctite right into that region here. There we go. So I'm putting quite a bit of Loctite on here. Yeah, yeah. quite a bit on there. Just a couple drops because okay. I don't want it to move around. Shit, yeah. Gather up my additional hardware, spacer and flat washer, put this back together. Put my rod in, into position, insert the stud and slip the spacer over it then the washer, and then up into the hole. Start threading it in. Once I get it in a few threads, then I'm gonna grab my impact driver and run this up. There we go. Now, the stud is back in position. All we have to do is take our 5 8 wrench and hold on to that acorn nut down below. Place the nylock nut back onto the stud. And ideally you want to have a brand new one. We don't have any brand new ones at the time. Cam can replace that at a future date. And run that nut down at a slow RPM. Then we want to make sure that we have a little bit of play. So I'm holding the acorn nut on the stud below and I'm checking how much tension I have on this nylock nut. I tighten it up and then I just crack it loose a little bit. The reason why is because you wanna be able to move your micros. You want that top plate and bottom plate to move separately of each other. So if you have too much tension on this nut and this nut, the micro adjustment system will not move. At this point, we'll take our dome washer, set it back over the stud, and screw the kip knob back on, and that tightens it down. The pressure from the kip knob is applied to the dome washer. The dome washer applies pressure to the top micro plate, and that joins the two plates together and prevents them from moving. And that tension you just put on, you would be pretty confident in that not moving with the tension you just used? Certainly. That's so one. Can I, I'm gonna fill this and see what your tension levels are, because I have a tendency to monkey paw the shit. Okay. Uh, so here's the thing. You don't have to get crazy with the tension. Certainly not. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm just grabbing it 
uh, with my hand uh -huh. and applying a decent amount of force on it. Okay. But here's the mistake that people make, and I see this a lot of times in shops. The employees think that knobs or uh, lock knobs for frames have to really, really be tightened uh, to a high degree, and that's just not the case. Uh, I see some people with the box end of a wrench, and they'll actually put it onto the kip knob uh -huh. and torque the kip knob. I've seen people hit these with hammers uh -huh. because they think that more is better, and it, it just isn't the case. With the amount of torque that I put on this, I would probably say it was about 60 pounds on each pole. Yeah, same with a frame. It's also the same here. Yeah, if we were to insert a frame into the holders and we'd run our uh, lock knobs down, as soon as this plate touches the f top of the frame, what I usually do is give it a half a turn, and on a manual, on an automatic press, half a turn, and on a manual, I'd go a full turn. That's about it. You're not going to be moving that frame because, remember, you're not moving this carousel uh, at, at, at a high speed. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you grabbed a frame that was in here and gave it a good thrust, you could probably tweak it. Sure. But we're here in a, in a shop, we're printing manually, we're just going to give it a gentle push from one station to the next, and it, it'll stay in position. Using those, those, the things that you just said, where will you often see movement more than likely? Is it typically in the pallets being loose, people not paying attention? Where, do you, where is it most common movement okay. when all of this is tuned up mm -hmm. and running well? Mm -hmm. uh, typically it's in the pallet bracket. So if you will take this pallet, uh, tri lock pallet off, four locking knobs on our pallet bracket. And if the shop is doing a lot of uh, changeovers from different size pallets, these knobs are getting a workout. They'll go back and forth, back and forth, clamping down onto the pallet bracket right here. And so over time, what starts to happen, even though it's a high impact uh, uh, plastic, it will start to wear over here. And again, the nylock nuts down below will start to loosen up. Make a slight adjustment to the nut down here so you create a better pinch point on this pallet bracket. That'll keep your pallet in place. But as the components wear, they'll need to be replaced as well. Gotcha. So just two fingers worth of pressure on the knobs is very sufficient to hold it in place. Here, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I feel a little looseness in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the knob and I'm gonna take my half inch wrench and I'm gonna apply just an eighth of a turn onto that nylock nut. Now, I'm getting a good grab. They do loosen up over time and would need to be replaced. Now this nut here is uh, 5 16 18. Uh, let's level the base of the press. And guys, if you got, if you have any follow-up questions for him, be sure to leave them in the comments of this video. I'm pretty sure he'll personally pop in and answer them for you. We don't mess with social media, so <laughs> leave the questions in the comments. I'll relay them to him, and then I'll, I'll put them in there. We'll get the questions answered somehow or another. We're gonna get our torpedo level. Now this is the proper way to level the base of a machine. Uh, whether it's a manual press like this Sidewinder or even one of our automatics, this is how it's done. So we place the magnetic level onto the arm of the machine and we swing the arm directly over one of the four legs of the machine. All right. And then at this point we take note of where the position of the bubble is. Now you can see that that bubble is not directly in between the two lines, so technically this is not level. Okay. But we can use uh, shims, for example, I can grab one of our hotel room key cards because we're on the road all the time, and I could even slip that under there just to bring my bubble up a bit. Let's take another one, put it in there. Okay, so now that gives me a better reference. You see it's still not level, but my, the edge of my bubble is right on that inside line. So that's easy for me to tell. It's, it's a good reference point. No part of the bubble is peeking out over the line. So I need to place this arm over the next leg and I go 180 degrees over. All right. So we're swinging it around. Oh, to the opposite side, okay. And we're gonna place it right over this leg, directly over it. Take notice of where the bubble is. And you can see that we have just a slight amount of the bubble poking out from that inside line. So at this point, we grab a half inch wrench. Uh -huh. Down here, there's a locking nut, which is already loose, but there's a notch in the leg, right above the foot, half inch notch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to raise this leveling leg and watch the bubble over here as I do it. Apply the half inch wrench to the leg and raise it up. See the bubble move? Eh, not much. Okay, I'm gonna do another half turn. 
So now what I do is I go back and I double check that one. Now we come over here and we take a look. All right, so now we've got the two legs of the machine level. All right, so we've taken the same arm, haven't touched the level, and now we've moved it to the third leg of the machine. So it's directly over the third leg, and I take a look and I see what my bubble position is. And I see that the tip of the bubble is, again, poking out past the inside line. So it's only a hair, but it is out. It's out. Okay. Okay. So now I want to check what it's like 180 degrees away. So we're going to go to our fourth leg. Uh, interestingly enough, we're in a real nice position right here. That bubble is, is sitting right on that inside line, so it is matched to uh, the, our other, our beginning, the first two legs we did. Mm -hmm. So right now I got three legs all in the same position, and now I know what I have to do to, uh, to, to get this base leveled and the center shaft of it plumb is to take a slight amount of pressure off this leg, bring the leg down a little bit, and now go back to the other side and lift that one. So that's loose, but now I'm gonna grab that leg, give it a twist, one half more twist, and there we go. Now I'm gonna spot check all four, double check my measurements, and then check for equal tension, equal pressure on all four feet. Going around to arm two. Leg two, sorry. Goddamn other things. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna uh, check all four feet. So I'm gonna come down here to this foot, put my half inch wrench, and I go back and forth, left to right, checking for tension. Oh. So I've got quite a bit of downward force on the foot to the floor. Now I go over to the next leg and I check it. I'm going to set it dead center in the pallet. We're going to see where we are. And then we're also going to turn it here towards the front. So got some tilt off. We got some issues. Yeah. Okay. And so now what we do is we use our leveling bracket on the bottom of the arm to adjust that pallet level. And that's, you know, hoping that the pallet is in good condition. Some pallets separate away from the brackets over time. You get people who will sit on them at their lunch break or yeah. they get tossed into a pile. And <laughs> the key here, Cam, is to get our uh, leveling bolts back into a zero position. I'm gonna loosen these nuts okay. on each bolt. Okay. So I'm gonna loosen the nut and I'm gonna spin it upwards. Okay. And what I want is an equal amount of thread above the bolt and an equal amount of thread below I'm sorry, above the nut and an equal amount below this nut. So all three get loosened. I'm gonna go. So you're basically just creating play right now. Correct. Okay. So above that top nut, I've got about an eighth of an inch of thread, maybe three sixteenths. Okay. Same at the bottom, about three sixteenths of thread below that nut. Okay. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to these two in the back. See, equal amount, uh -huh. equal amount. Okay. I mean, plus or minus a couple threads. So I'm gonna take that bottom nut and I'm gonna drop it down a little bit. Okay. And then I'm just gonna tighten up on the top nut to cinch the bracket together. Okay, that was good. Okay. That was, that was really just one rotation of that lower nut. So uh, now I'm just gonna place that side to side in the rear. And what do I need to do? I need to come up on the left. Yeah, we just spin it down with my finger a little bit. And then I'm just gonna tighten up on the top one. Okay. And that, what that did is it raised it up a little bit on yep. the left. And I'm going to go over here to the right. I'm going to loosen up the top nut. And then I'm going to take the bottom nut and draw it downwards. And that, right there, pulled me into level. Yep, it did. Yeah. Now I'm going to bring to the rear and just double check over there. Looks like I need to come uh, down just a hair more. I mean, it's a nut hair, though. Yeah. Uh, now you know the procedure for uh, leveling and plumbing the base. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've uh, locked up the locking nuts on each of the four legs. Um, we leveled out one pallet uh, by zeroing out the three leveling bolts on, on an arm bracket, yeah. pallet bracket, and then uh, placing the torpedo level on the pallet front to rear, mm -hmm. on the pallet side to side front, side to side rear, and using the three-point leveling system below to make adjustments with. Yeah. Once we have that pallet in uh, the uh, spot we want it, 
we just double check everything. We're tight on that nut, this nut, and that nut. <laughs> Again, yeah, I'm not, I'm not cranking these things. Yeah, yeah dude. Once we've done that, chill on the tightness, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So the next thing I wanted to cover is the registration uh, on the machine and how that's achieved. The head drops down this registration fork, each head has a fork here. When it drops down into the two registration bearings, this is all done at the factory by our, our uh, manufacturing staff. So you'll see that when the fork drops down here, that it clips into the two bearings and you can see the bearings rotate. So you're always applying pressure to the same precision machined location. Correct. Okay, there we're really? pushing, and now you see them pinch. And so over time, if you noticed that when you drop your head down mm -hmm. and it, it, it goes gently into the registration forks, at that point, you would loosen this little set screw on the left of the bracket mm -hmm. with an Allen wrench. Just crack the set screw loose. Put an open end wrench here onto the hex uh, body of the eccentric bearing. This is a post that the bearing is pressed onto. Mm -hmm. And then you would, I think it's 11 16 and you just take and tweak it a little bit. And because it's eccentric, it'll it moves in an elliptical pattern right. and it'll it'll force that bearing to get closer to the one on the right. right. And then you'll achieve uh, a tight fit. Now, do you need to be applying uh, the pressure onto it when you're tightening this or once I, once i have it tight i'll hold my hold. eccentric bearing with the wrench and then i'll tighten my set screw back down gotcha perfect right. so if you have a head that's slightly out of level like this one is and yes, again that is. might have been because of uh, the tensioning that you did uh -huh. what you would do is you would put an allen wrench into the, the head of the bolt inside of this hole mm -hmm. and then loosen the nut on the back <laughs> crack the two loose <coughs> lift or lower the bar and tighten them up. All right, so I'm gonna crack it loose. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm gonna tighten it back up. And you're set. So thank you so much for sharing that, dude. Not just with me, but you're pretty much sharing it with everybody, sure. dude. Can't beat that, right? Free knowledge? That's, that's what uh, we pride ourselves on, is helping out the customers. So uh, give us a call. Our tech support guys are there in Chicago. They'll help you out over the phone. Uh, shoot them pictures, shoot them videos. Uh, if, uh, if you need some on-site service, we can be scheduled to come on in. Okay. Um, we're, we're available. Thank you so much. All right, Cam. I'm Later, glad boys. Nice to meet you. Yeah, man. All right. So now it's just up to you and me to start making it work. Uh, so you got it. <laughs> right here.